In this world of technology, things are ever changing, rearranging. You need someone to help you out. I know someone who can. Come and take a journey with me as we go through the land of technology. You'll never be alone. You'll be with Paul. I'm a dead slain in the tech zone. Welcome back to the show, Tech Zone Paul. I'm a dead slain. Thank you so much for just bearing with me as I'm dealing with allergies, eye issues, face issues. I'm looking kind of scruffy today. Normally, I don't look too scruffy, but when I don't feel good, I don't look good. So bear with me. I promise next week, it'll be all clean shaving, all the all the bells and whistles next week. I'm just sick right now, guys. So please bear with me. Don't play with me on the Twitter, on the social media, you know, trolling me about my look. It'll get better next week, I promise. Hey, but, I, but I'm here. I'm doing the show. As you all know, I love me some music. Uh, former musician, songwriter, well, I guess not former, I still am, just don't do it as much. Songwriter, and my recent visit to the NAMM show really took me back. I talked about how when I was younger, my older brother Andrew, who was in the music business, uh, used to take me to the NAMM show when he lived out in uh, Florence, Alabama. How many of us know about Florence? Alabama out there, northern Alabama. He worked at a music store. And his music store used to send him out here to Anaheim, California to cover NAMM. So he would um, get passes for my father and other friends. He never got one for me. I was like kind of an afterthought. But I was able to use one of the other passes of somebody else that he got. But uh, you can't do that nowadays. You got to show your ID. So I think we were the reason because of that back in the days. But I love hearing about innovation out there uh, and music, technology, and how different companies out there are marrying them both uh, together to creating uh, some great product out there. And I ran across uh, this one innovator, uh, Chris Prendergast. And Chris uh, developed uh, this technology called Jamstack. So I went up to Chris, spent a little time with him, and I want to share a little bit about our conversation. And so I first asked uh, Chris uh, the question, what is it like being at NAMM? And uh, and tell me about the experience. And, and notice uh, how Chris felt about being there. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's actually really tempting to not just like leave your booth and walk around and check out all the cool stuff. But yeah, I met, I met uh, cool artists and publications and some retailers. So, you know, it's, it's been a good investment so far. Yeah, I mean, it's I've heard about NAMM since I was a kid. And it's kind of weird to, like, have your own company and be, uh, you know, uh, playing. And, and last year, uh, we were just kind of in development. And we talked about maybe coming, but didn't have the money. We just launched last month. So, you know, it's kind of a cool milestone to be able to board a booth and be ready for, for retail. So it's exciting. I love uh, Chris opening up about just being in NAM and you know how he felt about felt about being there, and, and that's one common thread, especially ones who are musicians and who have different companies uh, who are representing NAM. Uh, they have that same kind of mindset. And now I wanted to turn my attention uh, uh, with Chris about what made him create uh, uh, Jamstack and and also uh, just. Um, you know, give us a little rundown of what, what Jamstack is. Yeah, sure. So it came out of frustration for myself. Like, I wanted to play more often. I wanted to play along to other music. And uh, the process of, of doing that was, was a really big pain in the butt. I just, and I just wasn't playing enough. So I, I kind of sat down one day and was like, there has to be a better way to play along to stuff and sound like the guitar in that song. So I started, and, and I, I remember thinking, what a great experience it would be if that was on your instrument, all like in one place. I would play more often, and I'd play, and and I said, well, why can't that that be possible? Maybe it is possible. And I started asking questions, and eventually built a prototype, uh, and was using it just for myself, and then started showing people, and people uh, said, this is really cool. You have to, you know, you have to make this, and that's how it all started. I love the way that Chris explained uh, what Jam Stack was. Now, he's going to give us a, a rundown of how it works. And if you're a musician out there looking to integrate um, this type of technology uh, to your acts, and for some of you out there who are not musicians, uh, 
an axe is a guitar. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just giving you a little bit of a little bit of game, and you know my motto: game is sold and not told. But this time I'm giving you that for free, so I'll let you know what an axe is. So Chris explains how how Jamstack works. Right. So it takes the analog signal from your guitar, and it has a built-in interface, which means it converts that into digital, so that your phone can uh, do all the magic. So like uh, add effects, loops, tuning, recording, all that stuff, right into the USB port. So then your phone uh, changes uh, the effect like a guitar pedal would, sends it back down that same cable, and then the amp converts that to analog so that it can get amplified by the speaker, which is more similar to a Bluetooth speaker. So music sounds great, you can play guitar at the same time. And then on top of all that, it attaches onto the body of your guitar using the existing strap button that's already there, which means you are just as portable as an acoustic. So put all those three things together, uh, and the experience is really fun. So what kind of effects? I mean, I can get a flanger kind of type setting? or Literally anything you could possibly think of has been modeled. Now, we're not a software company uh, right now, but there is software like GarageBand, for example, Tone Bridge, to play. There's, there's amazing software. Any pedal you could think of has been modeled. Uh, Tone Bridge has 9,000 presets for popular music. You can get in, you can make changes to them. Uh, you can loop. Anything you would want to do as a guitar player is possible on your phone. This is awesome. So talk about... Being a musician, who were some of your musicians you looked up to? Yeah, I mean, uh, Jimmy Page, uh, Angus Young, uh, Steve, Stevie Ray Vaughan, like blues, classic rock was what my parents listened to and uh, and, and who I idolized uh, growing up. Play a lot of Rage Against the Machine, you know, that that kind of stuff. And yeah, I, I think that comes out. I'm, I'm like, uh, if I was to say like, who I was as a musician, uh, not that I'm anywhere at the same level, but I'd say I'm a fusion between Stevie Ray Vaughan and Jimmy Page, probably. That's like my style. Wow. You know I'm going to have to have you play something in a minute. Then. Let me see. But you know what? And, and before I have you play something, one thing I love about talking with um, startups like yourself and techpreneurs and musicians is that a lot of people build stuff out of frustration because of something they want to see. Talk about living in a technological age that we live in now where we can have these ideas, put them to fruition, and really show them off here and now. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how uh, a company would be a hardware startup 50 years ago, because, I mean, 3D printing is a simple example, right? Uh, being able to uh, source parts online for things really cheaply. Um, uh, crowdfunding uh, was huge for us. We did crowdfunding, which, which we said, hey, look, this is this really cool thing we want to make. No one's going to give us money for it unless the customers, you know. So we did a bunch of pre-orders, and we were to use that money and partnered with an industrial design firm, and uh, you know that's how we, we got to market. Uh, and I and I I wouldn't know an, uh, how to do that, you know, even 10 years ago, but because it's there is a, a less barrier to entry. It's still hard, but you can. It is possible. I love the way that that Chris explained Jamstack to us how it works. And uh, just the vision behind it, and and him opening up to us uh, about um, you know having one um, support the company, um, and just all this being culminated at, at NAM 2019, it had to be really surreal uh, for Chris. And when I was uh, uh, talking to him, you could tell he was just like just really honored to be at NAM and showing off this uh, this amazing uh, amazing product. Uh, that he had. So when you think of the word Jamstack, you may wonder why call it Jamstack. See, if you're a musician, maybe you understand, or maybe if you have some familiarity with uh, with uh, uh, music or engineering, when stack means a certain thing. But if you're not, Chris explains how to come up with uh, with the name Jamstack. And you know I had to put him on the spot to give us a little jam session. I wanted to see how he played his axe because he was wrapped up and ready to go. So we're going to check out Chris's skills as well, too. How'd you come up with the name of Jamstack? Uh, that's a good question. I was talking with a friend, actually, and we were, he just like had a little bit of a lightning bolt. He was just like, you know, it stacks onto your guitar. The word stack, you know, is reminiscent of amplifiers. Um, it's great for... For jamming with acoustical instruments, yeah. I, and then as soon as he said it, I was like, I, "That's the one." So actually, it wasn't it wasn't even me. It was, it was a buddy of mine. Awesome. You have to get down for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll play some Make that axe talk. <laughs> play along to 
to another song if you want. I don't know if I'm allowed to do that, but so watch this. Check this out. We're in for a treat. Chris is going to play along with an, another song. I love it, man. You made it do what it does, man. That was cool. That was cool. Chris in the house. Chris, give uh, that information out again, how ones can uh, check out Jamstack. Yeah, jamstack.io. You'll find us everything there. All right, folks. That was Chris Prendergast from Jamstack. I really enjoyed talking to him. He can get down on that axe, can't he? Now, class, what is an axe again? It is a guitar. Yes, it is a guitar. And uh, that module that they created, um, a jam stack that allows you to, to do the certain things that maybe you as a musician wanted to do all along but weren't able to do. But now because of technology and great companies like Jamstack, with Chris and him is doing something very, very awesome. Make sure you support them, show some love. And uh, thank you for... Uh, my journey through NAM. I'm looking forward to being in NAM next year. If God is willing and the creek don't rise, I will I will definitely, definitely be there uh, giving uh, you some, some great uh, uh, information out there when it comes to music and technology and amongst other things too. All right, when we get back, we're gonna talk about autonomy, autonomous vehicles. We're gonna take a trip back down memory lane to ES 2019. I'll be chatting with uh, an awesome company out of France. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Remember, always connect with me, Paul, AmadeusLane.com. You're in the tech zone. We'll be back, folks. In this world of technology, things are ever changing, rearranging. You need someone to help you out. I know someone who can. Come and take a journey with me as we go through the land of technology. You'll never be alone, you'll be with Paul, I'm a dead slain in the tech zone.